All right, guys, real quick, we're going to make a quick video, just getting a quick update of everything we're doing to the car. So down below, let me know if you like. No. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. So here's the start of a video of getting ready to install the dopest set of lights you have ever seen. Our buddy Ray with his company, Lawrence the Q6, he is getting ready to put some RGB, IC, TP, something, I don't know, some super smart lights on a car. Uh, he's been telling about it, but regardless, man, stay tuned. A lot of things we've done, we're getting ready to do this car. Um, we have to do a little bit of custom simply because they don't make certain things for the CRX, but regardless, I still want it on the car and this guy to make it happen regardless. So let me just turn the camera around and show you some of the things that we're gonna put on the CRX to light this thing up. When I tell you, listen to my words when I tell you, this is literally gonna be the brightest car you've ever seen at nighttime. And I kid you not, and I'm willing to put this up against anybody. This car is gonna be literally the brightest thing ever. Lights everywhere. Let's go. All right, so to start off, this is the first thing we're going to do that most people have seen, but you know, these are real light rings. So, <clears throat> so I'm gonna post a picture down below, but most of you guys uh, don't know me. <clears throat> so, uh, when I had my very, very, very first car, it was like 2009, it was a Chrysler Sebring. I'll make sure I post pictures right here. And uh, I wanted lights in my wheels because I had chrome wheels at the time. At the time, chrome wheels, chrome rims, ah, were a big thing. And being able to put lights behind them to make the chrome and the lights reflect off of them was super dope. So this didn't exist at the time. So what I did was I took some just regular LED lights and I taped them along my calipers on both sides just to wire them up so I can have LED lights. And they were super, super cool. Like no one had them and I was so hyped to drive around the city. So to have the technology now to have these is so much of a blessing. But yeah, anyways, back to the CRX. All right, so here's the dilemma. The CRX wheels are only 15 inches, all right? And the smallest light kit I can find is 15 and a half inches, which is still way bigger than the actual rim of the car, yet alone the inside diameter that this needs to go around just to fit around the rotors and calipers to have the LED lights on it. So what we have done and what I did is because we're not using these LEDs at all, we don't care about them. We have pretty much stripped off, we're in the process of still stripping off the LEDs completely. And then we broke the solder joint on the inside of each of the rings. So on the regular ones, they have a nice clean solder joints from the aluminum. So what we're going to do is we're going to crack it open and we're going to forcibly resize to the ring size that we need. And we're gonna put a metal clamp around it to whatever size we need. So it's going to be able to hold that size. So it's gonna fit with the size of my wheels. So I still have the ability to uh, be lit up. Secondly is, is as you can tell most light kids just put the one led light on the outside but because ray is extra what we're going to do is we're going to put an led light on the outside and on the inside as well and the reason why is and the reason why is when you uh have lights on just the outside a lot of the end of the realm kind of gets missed as far as the uh, brightness of the lights and in order to go for the brightest car at nighttime, we must have lights every inch possible. So we're gonna put lights on the inside and the outside of each ring. And when I tell you guys, matter of fact, you know what? I'm gonna show you a real quick glimpse of what the lights can do. Watch this. All right, so we're in the paint booth real quick. So 
Brady took up the lights. I don't know how he got it rigged up, but he rigged it up somehow just to show what the lights will look like. Um, so these lights are going to be going inside the wheel rings I just showed you. We're going to put one on the outside of each wheel ring and one on the inside. So once again, I'm going to tell you right now, these lights are going to be extremely, extremely bright. And even this video I showed you right there, that was on a standalone battery that was already halfway dying and they still was that bright. So you can only imagine. Anyways, let's get to the next new update we have. It's this box right behind us. Let's go. All right, so as you know that Right now, the interior is um, black on the dash, black on the center console, black carpet, um, all the panels are black, door panels, everything's black. But the seats and the box right now is white. So, uh, got inspired by one of my buddies that I follow on YouTube uh, by the Strad Man. And I think about a year ago, he had a Lamborghini Aventador and he had the guts done all white. And I was like, dude, that'd be so dope to do it. But I was like, yeah, never in a million years if I actually do it. So my buddy, well, my buddy, Ray, as always, uh, was on something on his iPad one day and was searching carpets and found out that we can get brand new carpet for the CRX. So I was like, good, because right now I have the old stock carpet in there and for years, I've tried to uh, spray paint it to get it darker. I've done it like at least three times. It always looks good for about a day or two. Then it always go back to look like crap. So uh, I got on there and the carpet was on like $170. And I know that in a um, restoration build, it's never the big things that grabs people's attention. You know, it's never the rims or the actual paint or the seeds, those are big things. But it's the small details, details, you know, the clips, the, uh, the door seals, you know what I'm saying, the, the screw holes being missing. It's the small things that actually make it go from looking nice to looking really, really nice. And uh, my own personal philosophy when it comes to uh, bass is, it's not about just being loud for me, I want to be loud, I want to look good, I want to sound good, you see know what I'm saying? I want to go around any crowd, any demographic, any car show, you know what I'm saying? Fit in and blend in, look good, and stand out all at the same time. So, the, so the new black carpet for the CRX is only 170 bucks. So, I said, let's do it. Let's do it, we have to do it, we have to do it. So... Let me show you what we got. Oh, I had a surprise in there. I had to move out the way. So anyway, so we got this from uh, Auto Customs Carpet Guy Inc. Uh, well, I'll tell y'all this came probably within three days. But uh, let's look at the new carpet for the CRX. Yeah. I did it. I joked you. I had to. Instead of going with the black carpet, we did white. Yes. So we have oh man. <laughs> The box is starting white, but yes, we have all white carpet for the CRX. The dopest thing about this is, as you can tell, there's no slits for the manual shift and for the center console. So we still have to do a little bit of work of cutting down um, the hose uh, for the shifter. And then on the edge, you have to do a little bit of trimming. Uh, but other than that, let's talk about it. Talk about Yo Gotti talking about CM6, all white, everything. Your boy is too excited right now, y'all. Like, I hope you guys can understand. I've always joked about doing the all white guts, all white interior. 
when we did it this time. We did it this time. Listen, it's right here. No one else is going to have a 1989 CRX with all white seats, all white floorboards, and the dash. Mm. Let me show you something. Hold on real quick. All right, so for the interior, this is what we got going down. I'm on YouTube watching some old CRX videos, and I heard this company called Flock It. And it's kind of like flay sweat uh, of... All right, on to the interior. So, your boy's on YouTube one day, and I'm just scrolling. I found this company called Flock It. And it's like it's suede materials that you pretty much apply their adhesive on it. Then you put suede fibers in a shaker, and you, like, pump action this into... Um, what other material is, and it comes out actual suede. Like, it's not like pretense where it's actual suede text and it has the filling and the the texture of actual suede, because it is. So, I said, well, let's give it a try. So, we got some black suede and we got some white suede. And we did a test on both of them. And here we go. So this is on the armrest. So most of you guys should know that the CRX does not have an armrest at all. It just has a little cubby hole. So uh, Matt Duba, shout out to Matt Duba, the guy who actually built, uh, put the new B18 motor uh, in my CRX. He had this in his car. And when I test drove it, I was like, dang, my arm feels so nice on it. He had a, an additional um, armrest out of a... 93 Civic Wagon, I think it was. So, and um, here I already did a little Dremel so it can fit out and fit into the CRX. Sold it to me for a few uh, few hundred bucks, I think it was. And so now I have a center console with the armrest in it. But anyways, so I said, well, it's not an original piece. What a great piece to test out the actual flay uh, um, suede on it. Excuse me. I'm getting all excited. But anyways... Here it is. It turned out pretty good. Um, our fault. We didn't read the instructions clearly. It did say to make sure that if you're going from a um, a black to go ahead and spray with an oil-based enamel spray paint before you apply the glue and the flock. So therefore, if the coverage is much better. Didn't read that part. Nevertheless, it was just our test piece. This is why we do test piece so we can test them out and see how we can do better and how we can uh, make it look better on the next one. So this is our first time doing it. And to be honest, it turned out pretty okay. And I see why they say you need to make sure that uh, the base of it is white or whatever the color you're spraying, simply because the glue and the flock is not going to give you 100% coverage, and you only have one opportunity. It's not like you can come back and add more glue or more flock. The texture is not going to be as smooth. It's going to show the marks of the painting strokes if you're not, uh, if you're not smooth. So, do always do a test. But nevertheless, this is the first test. Um, but it came out pretty good. I, I, I can't complain. I don't have twenty thousand dollars to make sure that the interior looks amazing. But I still want to stand out. I still want to make sure that when you see this car, you know it's Mr. Chalker's car. So I had to go above and beyond. So I came with to complain. So with the white. Uh, on the center console with the white on the floors, a uh, floor carpet. You already know we have the white uh, white seats, but here we go. And then the last one on the black. So the black, we're going to do the door panels, the dashboards, um, all the rear quarter panels. We're gonna put that in black suede. So we're gonna have the top of the CRX gonna be in black suede, with the bottom of it in white, and just the middle console all white with the white on the floors, the white on the seats. Let me say it again, cause I'm not talking fast. Y'all listening slow. Hold on. Let me say this again. We finna have black suede on the door panels, on the top of the door panels. Black suede on top of the dashboards with white suede on the bottom of the door panels. And everything underneath the dashboard will be white suede with the entire middle console completely done with white suede, with white seats, with the white carpet. Your boy is finna go all white right everything. I hope you guys can understand the intensity of my voice when I tell you this thing is finna be phenomenal.
Stay tuned. I got one more update. Let's go. All right. So on to the next topic. Let's talk about the radio. So we're not going to be keeping the CRX looking stock. We're not going to pretend it's going to be a stock vehicle. We are customizing everything about this vehicle. So for those people who would like a stock vehicle or who like the vehicle to be restored to as close to factory, this is not that bill. We are trying to make this thing outlandish as possible that everyone and a mama know this car when they see it. So we're not gonna stop when we get to the inside. So a few months ago I was in my garage and Ray was joking around and put my iPad Pro up against my up against my middle uh, center console to see if it actually fit. Well, it looked good. Well, we've been debating for the last four months on how to actually make this kind of look like the Tesla iPad, but in a CRX. That's the goal. So that's what we've. This is what we came up with, pretty much. All right. So this is my iPad Pro. The 12.9, it is huge. It is huge. So this is what we're gonna do. So instead of going with a traditional radio, we're gonna go with a da 18 BT2 audio receiver. Now this thing right here goes extremely far. But all the way it is pretty much, is it kind of takes the place of your head unit. So it's still your head unit, but just without the screen and display and all the other settings features. So it goes straight from the RCAs, straight to the amplifier, and then on the back of it has three wires. Let me show you one second. Okay, so here's a better view of it. All right, so pretty much it has RCAs that are coming straight out. Now, for us, luckily we already have a Tarion processor that we're going to be, we got a processor that we're going to run this directly into. So it's going to be very, very simple. And then these are all the wires. So you have your, of course, your power ground, recessory, and then your turn on wires as well. So we're going to go stream Bluetooth from the iPad straight into the processor. And this processor is going to go right into the, I'm sorry, to the, uh, excuse me, start over. We're going to stream Bluetooth stream from the iPad straight into the Bluetooth receiver from the Bluetooth receiver straight into the processor, and then you guys, uh, the signal will get diverged to the web amplifier. So, pretty simple. Uh, I've had this version before. I've had the second um, second version. This is the fourth one. Now it's waterproof, so it can go out there in the water and marine motorcycles, so it has a lot more um, cool things to go along with that. So, now on to the second part of how we're going to actually make this work. So we're on uh, Amazon for, I don't know. Okay, so with the iPad, um, what we're gonna do is we're going to, um, so with the iPad, with the processor, we had to find a way to mount it in the car so that way it looks fit and finished, but it don't, you know, we don't have wires everywhere in the car. So. I know I said earlier that the goal is to not make the car look as stock as possible, but the goal is also to make the car look aesthetically uh, pleasing to the eye as possible. We wanna make sure that, that the theme is carried all the way through, that the nuts and bolts look nice, you know what I'm saying? So there's still a lot of carrying to it, but we're just not trying to make it look back as, um, as factory as possible. But anyways, so with this um, tablet mount we found right here, it's like it's a, a, a security wall mount that you can place on the wall for your iPad mount, the iPad, and but you're able to lock it in so no one can walk up and just pull it off. Uh, so we're going to mount this uh, where the radio goes so that we can get that, um, that test of screen look in the car and really try and give it a new modern theme, even though it's a CRX, but who else do you know is putting a 12.9 iPad Pro? and an A9 CRX with the chocolate. But anyways, so on to the next item of business where we have, wait, first, let me show you what it looks like. Then on to the next update. Hold on. 
All right, so here we go. So I've already opened it uh, a lot, but um, pretty much to see how it kind of it stretches. But let me show you, hold on. Okay, so pretty much this is how it's gonna go on the bag. We still gotta mount it and secure it. And then it has a secret uh, lock on there. But yeah, so pretty much it's gonna float pretty much like this and be all this would be recessed into the dashboard. So it'd be kind of floating up. Uh, so it'd be floating up and uh, looking nice. All right, next thing. All right, guys, so here's right here. We have our brand new uh, LTO battery bank that we finally got built. We've had this bank for almost a year. Um, sitting here, the cell's all apart. But uh, this is, these are the Xinquan six amp hour, 2.4 volts LTO cells. But these are the welded versions. So these have a uh, 70C discharge. So uh, each bank is good for about 3K RMS and about 5K on a burp. So we have four total banks here. Uh, so this bank is easy, easy good uh, for between 12 to, you know, 15K. 20k RMS. So this bank will be good for about you know 12k RMS, roughly you know 16k on the burp. Uh, but a monster battery. But we also have a 36 amp hour uh, listing going with it as well. So we're gonna have the high discharge battery along with a 36 amp hour of listing to have on the uh, the reserve as well. So cool thing about um, the CRX is that the people who I bought it for them had already had uh, turned the vehicle into a base vehicle. Uh, so we got to kind of rip all their old stuff out of there. But some things they did install already uh, perfect for what we need, which is a uh, voltage regulator. So with the 350 uh, Burn X alternator, I'll be able to control the voltage on it, which is already wired up into the car already. So I'll be able to run the uh, LTOs roughly between that 15A to 16.1 on the voltage. So um, it should pretty much feed the two AKs right now. And I was always see good voltage. Um, hence, it's, it's a big system, but a pretty big, small system. Uh, so yeah, so on to the next update. All right, so earlier we was talking to you guys about the suede. So this is what the white looks like. And on the battery box, I'm going to have a whole entire video of us. We did everything. Well, excuse me. I have a whole video of Ray doing it. <laughs> but anyways, I have a whole video of us building the box. And this is also the same material as the white. But this is what the black looks like. So this was complete MDF wood. And this is what it looks like. I mean, it literally looks amazing. I'll post a picture of it after. But let's go. Okay, on to the last few things that came in for the update. We have some new black suede Alcantara to go on to the hairliner. So it's going to look a million times better. Um, we got a little secret about this. I don't want to reveal too much about it yet, but... Uh, this is gonna be super dope. And then on the wheels, we have our new wheel rivets come in. So these came from Slick Speed, came in really fast. But uh, originally my wheel rivets were gold, but now they're white, so much better. Uh, last thing I think, so this is gonna be for the gauges. So right now all the gauges are just factory looking. But we're going to pull that out, put the white gauges in there so it kind of can match the theme of everything with the white and black. And just kind of make things pop. Also, so here is the uh, all-white organ collection, uh, all-leather sh um, shift boot to uh, be paired up with my Mugen carbon fiber shifter. So it's going to look absolutely amazing. All right, everything. Let's go. All right, so here's to start off the update about the CRX. So we have some sad news. We'll not be able to make Triple Fest. I uh, did everything I possibly could to make this show happen. Uh, about three weeks ago, dropped off the 
CRX to get worked on. But my guy Shane Jones, which he did, I'm gonna make sure I post the videos uh, of what he did in this, uh, post the video he sent me of what he did in this video. But they uh, did a tune up on it pretty much. And uh, the car started running completely perfect until he let the car run one day for about 15 minutes. And then he noticed the car started acting up really, really bad and started running really rough. So he couldn't find out what it was and could not tell if it, whether it was a distributor bag or the ECU. But as we said earlier that we pretty much put new everything inside the engine already. So it's already a new distributor in there. So he tested that, made sure the distributor was not getting um, overly high in certain areas and ended up swapping out my ECU for his Honda. Uh, ECU and the car ran completely fine, perfect, everything. So he ended up opening up the casing for ECU and found out that some of the capacitors may have spilled uh, on the ECU. So, um, which is cool. So we try to find the ECU for that car uh, for with the engine swap for like the last literally 12 days. And we have been unfortunate able to find the right ECU, but not a problem. So instead of us being bummed out, he's still going to take the car and take off to the alignment shop through the car line since he's done with it. And um, my ECU now, I'm gonna go get it, get it repaired. And while it's getting repaired, we can go ahead and install uh, everything you saw in this video right now. Uh, so it's me and Ray, we have time to knock it out and bust it out. So was hope the, uh, the goal was to make Triple Fest and then for Symology, all the things you saw in this video, that was going to be the surprise for Symology. But since we're not uh, doing triple phase, you might as well go ahead and drop the video now. Get you guys updated on what we're doing, what we're going, and what we got planned. So, man, let's stay tuned and uh, just keep your eyes out for when we are dropping off um, the car to get tuned up. I think I'll make a video for that one. But I'm definitely going to make a video of us installing all of the goodies we've seen in this video and us tearing the car down to flock all the interiors i'm definitely going to show you guys the before after full start to finish as i always do but once again mr Taki, we are out until next time make sure you guys like share and subscribe let's get it